Hello and Namaste. Last week I visited the Surutapalli Shiva Temple, also known as the Pallikundeshwara Temple. It is situated about 50 kilometers from Chennai and believed to be built during the Vijayanagara period. Because our state is full of ancient temples, we sometimes miss out on beautiful gems in our neighborhood. This is one such temple with a fascinating mythology. This temple is called Pradosha Kshetram and it is believed that Pradosham began here. Pradosham is an auspicious day for Shiva. It is celebrated twice every month on Trayodashi, which is three days before the new moon and the full moon. The story of Pradosham is from the famous Puranic tale of the churning of the milky ocean. The Devas and Asuras were churning the milky ocean to obtain Amritam or the nectar of immortality. They used Mount Mandara as the churning stick and the snake Vasuki as the churning rope. During the intense pressure of the churn, Vasuki fell dizzy and started spewing her poison, a deadly venom called Halahalam. This poison was so potent that it destroyed everything it touched. Horrified by the destruction it was causing, the Devas and Asuras ran to Kailasha to seek Shiva's help. Shiva comes down from his abode, scoops up the halahalam in his hand and swallows it without a second thought. Parvati is shocked by Shiva's action. She rushes to his side and holds his throat to stop it from poisoning the rest of his body. Shiva's throat turns blue due to the effect of the poison. That is why Shiva is called Neelakanta, which means blue-necked. In spite of Parvati's efforts, the poison takes a toll on Shiva. He feels dizzy and lies down on Parvati's lap. All the devas and rishis watch in concern as the Divine Mother places Shiva's head on her lap. Everyone prays for Shiva to revive. On the evening of Trayodashi, that is the 13th day of the fortnight, he wakes up. He is delighted to see all these people gathered around him. He expresses his joy by performing his signature dance, the Ananda Thandavam, on the head of his beloved bull, Nandi. He is supposed to have danced for one and a half hours between the horns of Nandi and this is celebrated as Pradosham. On this day, Nandi is worshipped and Abhishekam is performed on him. Devotees whisper their wishes in Nandi's ears and he carries it to his Lord. It is believed that if you worship Shiva during Pradosham, he will forgive all your sins. Here in my hometown of Chennai, you will see Shiva temples overflowing with worshippers during Pradosham. So why is Surutupalli called Pradosha Shetram? The legend has it that after drinking Halahalam, Shiva was returning to Kailasha. It was when he reached this spot that he felt dizzy and lay down on Parvati's lap. This is how Shiva and Parvati are depicted in this temple. It is a beautiful image. Shiva's head is resting on Parvati's lap. His eyes are closed. He looks frail. The arm which holds his weapon Ankusham is slumped on the floor. In contrast, Parvati looks majestic. She radiates power. The divine couple is surrounded by a slew of gods and sages. On either side of Parvati, the sun and moon gods are present. Sages like Markandeya, Agastya, Valmiki, Narada are standing around the couple and appear to be praying. Gods like Brahma and Vishnu, Shiva's sons Kartikeya along with his wives and Ganesha and many others can be seen. There is something awe-inspiring about this image. You get goosebumps when you stand in front of it. We are all familiar with Mahavishnu in reclining pose as Ranganatha or Ananta Padmanabha Swami. This is the only temple where Shiva can be seen reclining. That is why this temple is called Pallikundishwara Temple or the Reclining Shiva Temple. In fact, Shiva is almost always worshipped in his lingam form. Surutupalli is one of those rare places where he is worshipped in his iconographic form. This place gets its name from two words. 
palli means to rest or recline and surutu means dizzy surutu palli means the place where shiva rested because he was dizzy apart from this magnificent image there are many intriguing idols in this temple those of you who visit shiva temples know that dakshinamurti is an ascetic form of shiva as the adi guru he is never seen with a consort shiva is supposed to have assumed this form after sati died and before he married parvati however in this temple dakshinamurti is seen with his wife gauri she seems to be sitting behind him and propping him up she seems to be gripping his arm and his shoulder and looking at him with concern this is in keeping with the theme of the temple which shiva diminished in strength and shakti protecting him this temple also has several connections with ramayana valmiki is supposed to have visited this temple before writing the ramayana there is an idol of the sage valmiki here and the main shivalingam of the temple is called valmikeeshwarar meaning the shiva worshipped by valmiki it has an unusual shape like a triangle there's another shivalingam called ramalingeshwarar at the entrance of the shrine you will find rama with all his brothers along with sita and anjaneya apparently this shivalingam was worshipped by rama and his entire family and hence the name ramalingeshwarar in this temple you will also find a rock with tiny footprints embedded in it these footprints look like ancient fossilized footprints of children another interesting legend is associated with this rock it is said that lava and kusha the sons of rama incurred sin when they fought their father during ashwamedha yagna so they visited many shiva temples along with sage valmiki to absolve themselves of this sin surutpalli is one of the temples they visited and it is their footprints that you find on this rock there is another intriguing story associated with the discovery of this stone itself the kanchi seer swami chandrashekar saraswati visited this town in 1976 and camped here for 40 days he seemed to have had a vision about this stone he apparently pointed to a particular spot and asked people to dig there when they did they found this stone and the seer disclosed that the footprints were those of rama's twins lava and kusha these are just a few of the legends associated with this temple there are several others it is said there was once a tunnel connecting this temple to kalahasti there are many intriguing and rare idols here this temple is on route to tirupati do visit it on your next trip to tirupati it is well worth your time that's it from me thank you for watching please subscribe and press the bell icon for reminders do share it with your friends and like minded people until next time namaste